Welcome to Homebrewer TV. Glad you could join me this week. The crew kind of slapped me around a little bit last week, said, you know, you're just getting a little too intense on this yeast stuff. I think we need a lighter show for once. Okay, we're going to lighten up a little bit on this show, and we're going to postpone our yeast discussion to continue on next time. But don't worry, we've got things to talk about and beers to taste, so we're going to have some fun. <laughs> you just be right here. This segment is sponsored by homebrewtalk.com. Join us and talk about your homebrewing ideas, questions, recipes, or anything else to enhance your homebrewing enjoyment. Homebrewtalk.com. I want to talk about there is so much information out there, and sometimes. Well, I know when I got started, I didn't even know what questions to be asking. So someone would say, please feel free, give me any question you have, and I'd be going, oh dear. I do remember the first time I heard the term mash tun. And I was going, hmm. Or hot liquor tank. Of course, I'm thinking we're going to have hot bourbon pouring out of some tank, and that wasn't what it was. But we all kind of grow in our knowledge of what we're doing in our brewing. And so I just wanted to share some of the things I have and then I've got a little extra treat for you. Forums. Forums are fantastic as an area to find information. If you have specific questions, forums are wonderful. Go on with your question. You'll probably get a half a dozen good answers. You may get a few that aren't as great, but you can figure out exactly what fits you. Check out the forums that are on the internet. Now, of course, I said, well, what if I don't even have a question to ask? I don't know what to ask. Well, how do I do on the forum? Well, you can go traveling through the forums a bit, seeing what they have to offer, and some of the questions that other people may have might be just what you're looking for. But, well, no, there's others. I <laughs> should. My first brewing book. Came with my first kit. Yes, I still have this. And it talked a great deal. Matter of fact, I don't know if you can see there's a beer stain still on here. <laughs> yeah. Well, it certainly answered a lot of the questions in the very basics of brewing. And it was wonderful. And I have now completely huge catalog, catalog, library of books. And you can see I just brought out a few of them to share with you. Great book on designing beers. I mean, I'm sure you've seen most of these. These are great books. These are wonderful. Again, the books also, if you have a specific question, you can go to that book. Now, for me, I know I was right into books immediately as fast as I started brewing. And I'd read the entire book. I found out I went back later. And of course, didn't understand half of what I read because I hadn't experienced the need of what it was talking about. The words sounded great. I was all excited. <sighs> I went back and reread the books, and I do this periodically. I go back and reread sections of books, and I find out at that point is when I need this information. And so that's why a library of books is so great. Well, we also have something else, and you've heard me say it more than once. I love Brew Your Own magazine. I find this magazine to be filled with great information. But again, there could be times when I first started getting this magazine, I was an extract brewer, barely knew anything about beer, so a lot of the stories were way over my head. But as, as the time goes by, you start gaining information, you start wanting to advance, and suddenly you find the information in here to be fabulous. That's why I say, don't throw this away. Save these. You're going to find that they're going to be great information later on. And I'm going to share with you a little bit of information that I went through some back issues of BYO and found some good things for you to enjoy. 
We hear a lot of questions on the forums about the different kinds of metals available for home brewers. Well, here's a story, metallurgy. In the November 2007 issue of BYO, it talks all about the different metals, how good they are used, their corrosions, all the aspects. It's going to answer your questions. Here's an issue of January, February 2006, in which, well, when I first started brewing, which I think a lot of you probably went through this, we were bottling our beer. Well, pretty soon you realized you hated bottling so much, so you went to kegs. And then it was, what do I do with the kegs? Well, here's another issue that has a great story on setting up beer pressures in the lines for your kegs and their taps. Perfect example of ones that I've saved. And as we continue on, like I said, I just have various little ones I wanted to share with you. You can see, I got them tagged. This one's, oh, you want to know about Herms rims? Well, here's a great story on Herms and rim systems. Yes, and when we did our segment on the Herms, this was one of the places that I got my information. Right. I got some more for you. Don't go away. Here we come. Oh, this is you had two. Now, one of the things I love about the magazine is it not only is just aimed at equipment or aimed at techniques or it covers a myriad of interesting areas. This one happened to have a stir plate, making your own stir plate. Oh, no, this is the 15 summertime recipes. 15 recipes. Not just one, not just two. 15 great recipes to try, and they talk about the recipes. You can always find recipes online for free, but do you know what they're going to taste like or what they're going to be or anything else? The title might say, you know, such and such is it. You don't really know. Well, this talked about it. And then, here we come. Doing your own stir plate so that you can do your wonderful yeast work. Great example, issue July 2007. Lots of information. <clears throat> Do you want to, oh, low hop brews. Recipes for low hop brews. We have members of our crew that just really don't like hops. Well, here's a whole group of low hop brew beers. Fantastic. You're gonna like this, what I'm gonna, at the very end, what's gonna happen here. Okay, beer garden. I, love, I think I probably went by this one and ignored it instantly because I was really into the equipment and the brewing and, and the drinking. But now I'm going to be growing my own hops and there's so many other fresh ingredients that you could be growing. Well, a brew garden. It's brewing some of these components in your backyard that you can use in your own brews. And let me tell you, fresh stuff is the way to make beer. This one's out of the March 2006 issue. Well, what else have we got? And I know, you guys are all excited about this. Ah, oh, this one's out of, a, oh, November 2010. This is a fairly recent one. You guys who love your hops, here is a story of how to make, basically, a hopinator. A unit to hold extra hops. And you put it in your tap system to add that extra hop aroma and flavor. I, I got lots of other... Oh, I know I got to share this one. We've talked about aerating your wort before you pitch your yeast. And of course there's thoughts about, well, too much oxygen. To, well, here's a story in which a brewery, New Belgium, has come up with an idea of using olive oil instead of oxygen aeration. How does that sound? Interesting story. They found it worked really well. Oh, this one. <clears throat> September 2010. There are 10 tips in here from professional brewers. This was a fabulous system of articles. I mean, all 10 of them were really great advice that any home brewer can use. One of the things that I love about the magazine is I can sit down with it and just thumb through the pages 
and let things catch my eye. Oh, that might be interesting. Where if I'm online, I'm having to search for things. Uh, I like the relaxation with my beer and having the magazine. Well, finally, we've gotten a lot of requests for one particular kind of brewed beer. It's a darker beer, but they wanted it brewed. Can I do it with coffee? Oh, absolutely. I love making a delicious coffee porter or a coffee stout. To me, the two go together. Wonderful. Well, here in 2007 is a story all about using coffee for your brews. It even talks about uh, roasting your own coffees. So, I hope this just kind of gives you an idea of how exciting this magazine really is and how much information it gives you. And it may not be something you're interested in today, but maybe down the year's road, you're going to find, oh, oh, I want this. Now, here's the other thing I want to tell you. This magazine, let's get the latest issue. If you're a subscriber to this magazine, you can go on their website and you can find back issue stories if you don't have the magazines yourself. So all these stories that I just shared with you, they're all available. All you got to do is go on their website as a subscriber. And to be a subscriber, this is very cool. Go right over here, click on the BYO button. It'll take you right to the subscriber site. Order your own magazine. You're going to get one and you're not going to have to pay for it right away. You're going to get one and you can try it out. And if you don't like it, if you just absolutely hate this magazine, you just tell them. And that's the end of the story. You even keep the one they sent you for free. Well, I mean, what a deal. That's kind of, that takes all the risk out of ordering something you don't know about. So, my little spiel on Brew Your Own Magazine today and, of course, other places to go to get information. I hope it helps you. I know, boy, has it helped me. This segment is brought to you by To Design Art. This lady does beautiful jewelry to get you out of the doghouse. And I know it's working because there's a lot of you guys out there that seem to be buying it. I keep hearing from them. And thank you very much because that helps them stay with me as a sponsor. Well, now, we're in the tasting room. And we know, normally in the tasting room, I've got two beers to taste. Well, I've only got one here and it's your fault. That's right. We've been getting lots of emails and there, I think even some postings on the forums about, I never can seem to find a beer I don't like. Well, you lit a fire under the butt of the crew and they went searching for a beer that they thought I wouldn't like. And I didn't think they would come up with one, but we're gonna find out. So. What did we got for me? Oh, a note. <laughs> of course. Mystery Beer 101. <laughs> Dear, no need to share with the crew. Well, Mystery Beer 101. All right. Well, the first thing I'm going to say is, that's a pretty beer. I don't see anything wrong with this. Uh, okay. Um, well... S smells not too bad. Uh, maybe slight orangey smell, but there's not a whole lot of odor. Now, of course, being told I don't need to share the beer and being told that it was their goal to find what I don't like, I'm afraid of what we're going to try, but we're going to give it a go. So I'm going to be honest. Oh, okay. This is the mystery beer. Mystery beer 101. I don't want to know what it is. Okay, this beer. But well, I'd almost I'd almost say that, this, that, 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 that something went wrong with this beer. It, is this a commercial beer? It is. All right. Okay. You guys did it to me. You found a beer that I didn't like. It's Mystery Beer 101. I don't know what it is. 
I don't care. I do know it's a commercial beer. Mm, but it's almost like it's infected. It just has a ooh, terrible. All right, I'm just gonna set the beer aside because obviously, if I'm gonna give it any thumbs, it's gonna be a massive three thumbs down. Wow. And I didn't think they could find a beer. We don't have to do this anymore. Let's just stay with good beers. Well, this beer is a home brewer's beer sent in to us by Don Barnum out of Southern California. You remember Don, he had the great video about his brewing system. And we've tasted one of his beers that was delightful. And this beer he calls his steam beer. And Oh, okay. This is and this is based on an extract type brewing rather than an all grain brewing. So this should be fun. There's also big bottle. Guess what, crew? I'm not sharing this. <laughs> Let's have a taste of Don's beer. Oh, anything to get the nasty taste of the last one out of my mouth. Well, it looks like a. When I saw it was a steam beer. Kind of related it to like an anchor steam, maybe. I don't know what. Maybe just the words. But, okay. This looks just like the last. Wow. They're like the same color. If I hadn't opened this beer, I'd think they were the same. That's a beautiful color. It's a beautiful looking beer. And it has a lovely aroma. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. Oh, this has a lovely, lovely malt with a little extra hops on top of it. And the hops are a very fruity kind of hops. This is quite nice. This is something you would be sipping a lot on on a beach in a hot summer day. Does he talk about his? He uses Northern Brewer hops. Well, Don, you did a great job again. Obviously, I'm giving you a couple thumbs up because this is a delicious beer. And I wouldn't have known that this was an extract brew if you hadn't said so. So, Don, thank you so much for your home brew. I love getting you guys' home brews. Send all of them you want in. And as far as the no, I don't think so. The crew's trying to get beer. I'm saving this for myself. That's just payback for them getting that whatever it was. Mystery Beer 101, never again. <laughs> Thanks for joining me here in the tasting room. And next week, I'm going to have two good beers. Not just the one. See you then. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining me this week on Homebrewer TV. I do enjoy sharing my information with you, and I love getting the emails from you and the comments. Also, remember, we are now on iTunes. So do me a favor. When you go to iTunes, make a comment. It helps keep my ratings up. And by all means, please, click on some of the links below to our sponsors. Those are the people that keep this show going. And you. Get out there and brew some beer. We'll see you next week right here on Homebrewer TV.